What is up everybody? It's Joe from JLB Games can at you with another cool video back in Planet Coaster 2 and today we're going to be talking about power management in Planet Coaster 2. So a lot of people don't know how it works or get a little bit confused. Now if you do go into sandbox here I will say if you don't want to have to worry about power management at all when you go to your new park here say we're just going to do temperate the default sandbox uh, you will have to worry about power management and staff management. Now, if you just want to build with no care in the world, select creative here because this will allow you to not have to worry. As you can see, unlimited cash, no power management or anything like that. No research. You don't have to worry about anything if you want to just build and build your dream park. Uh, always do creative in that aspect. But if you do want to have some management features, uh, you can choose the other ones as well. Challenge or default. Default, again, you're going to have to worry about power management. So anyways um that's just to get started like you don't if you're in sandbox you do not have to do power um if you don't want to just make sure you're under the creative um preset um so but we're going to be talking about power management today so we're going to do the default so i can show you how to do power management so we're going to load this um build up with our management features turned on so we do have unlimited money however we are gonna have to worry about power. So let's say if I go in and build a coaster real quick, let's just build the minder, why not? You're gonna notice it's gonna have this icon up here and it doesn't have any power to it. So we're gonna have to supply it with power. So there's a few things when it comes to power. Uh, if we go to create custom here and go to our utilities under facilities, we're gonna go to utilities here. Um, and you can see that we do have our power options here. We have a power distributor, a power generator, and a couple options for solar panels. Now, and then you also have your power cables to demolish or add a power cable. So there's a lot, of, uh, the differences between these are uh, very important. So the distributor is going to distribute your power around and it just needs to be near a ride. It doesn't have to be, uh, accessible to your mechanics it just needs to be near the ride you're trying to power so you can see that circle that is the area that it's going to cover now if you do a power generator or solar panel this is where you're going to want to put these uh, with your staff pads and everything you need to put these in a place where your mechanics can actually um, uh, actually have access to but if you'll notice here your park entrances actually have power sources so if you're just starting out on a park if you just go ahead and plop down a power distributor over by your first ride just to get you started and then it automatically gets you to your cable connection you can actually connect these to your park entrances and it will power your part or your ride right up so uh when you're first starting out you don't have to actually put down a power generator right away um, until you run out of power and your entrances don't need servicing so this could also be a thing you could also pop down a ton of entrances and not have to worry about the mechanics servicing your power they don't supply a ton of power but you can see they can supply up to 120 and to see how much your ride takes or whatnot uh, you'll just go over here um, and go into your tabs um, you can see operations that this uses uh, 33 power. So it's going to use 33 of that 120. Um, so you can see if we go into our cable here, you can see where this is going off of it. It's also important you know where your distributors are connected to uh, as well. So we can connect all of these if we really wanted to. That way we utilize all of the power here. So everything here is going to be utilized um, in that regard. So again, if we look on our power here, we have a total capacity of 120 uh, when it comes to our power used. And you can see that it's connected to our power distributor. And this won't... Uh, won't give us power won't use power until we open the ride so let's go ahead and connect our ride up just real quick and open it up uh, once the testing is done so let's go ahead and get it tested 
and we can see that that power is going to be utilized once it's open. So it won't use the power until the ride is open. So we'll go ahead and open it now. And now if we go here and look at our power, you can see power is not being used. Uh, 33 out of 33 power being used for this distributor. If we go to the distributor, you can see the power available to that distributor from what we have. So we have 360 total and we're using 33. So we can use um, 320 uh, set. We still have 327 more to go. So we can utilize that. So if I was to place another distributor, say over here and everything, remember you always have to connect them too. This is not gonna automatically be connected. So to connect them, make sure you go to your facilities, utilities, and connect it so we can actually connect it with this and we can distribute that power elsewhere so you can see that this has 327 so this one also has 327 because it's taking this is the power source right here and we're distributing that power throughout here so that's going to be so you want to place these very strategically and these are also uh make your uh our, our negative scenery rating as well because guests don't like to see that you can see negative 750 scenery score so you want to put these in a place that guests cannot see them obviously not right here but um but you can see kind of how that works so if i was to place down say a food stand let's just use a blueprint um for the purposes of this We'll go ahead and place a chief beef down. It will give you a check mark. That means it's within the distributor's range. And if we open this up, you can see it only uses five power. But if you look at the distributor again, it was 327, now it's 322. So shops don't take a whole lot. Your rides are gonna be taking up the most. So just keep in mind though, that it, this distributor only has 322 now as well because it's going off of the same power source as this. So if you were to use all of this 322, you're going to have to need a new power source. Um, and for that, you're going to have to either place down a uh, uh, a generator, a power, one of the power generators, or the solar panels, which the solar panels are pretty pricey. See, the small one's 10000 the larger one's 40,000, or the generator is 500. So if you're on a budget, you're going to have to go with the generator. So let's take a look at the differences here. The generator, the solar panel, and the large solar panel. So if we look at these guys, you get 120 power available from the power generator. You only get 80 from the small solar panel, and you get 300 from the large solar panel. So obviously the power generator is a lot better than I would say than the uh, small solar panel. The small solar panel, you yeah, don't get much. So you just keep that in mind. And these need to be in a spot that you can that your mechanics can actually access. So you'll want these in a spot where your mechanics can get to. So you'll want to make sure you have either a staff path. We use I usually use the stamp builder, of course. That way your mechanics have access to the spot. Because <clears throat> they're gonna have to service them. Because if you look at here and go to maintenance, <clears throat> you can see that once they start degrading, you're gonna get a condition penalty and it will actually <clears throat> degrade and you will lose pow an amount of amounts of power as well so you want to make sure that you have some mechanics that can take care of these and a good way to do that is if you click on their staff schedule you can see here um so if you go again to get here click on them go to staff schedule click on their staff schedule you'll click on one of these you can see where their break is go to advanced settings and then if we go to specific ride or machine, we can click on this and you can have them assigned to that. 
if you really want to. So you can see here, they're assigned for power generator at eight to service and repair. If you click on this again, advanced service, you can actually do apply all day and he will service this all day, except for when he's on break uh, at the hour 15. So what you can do is for your other mechanic, so you have a second one, you can schedule them to service that when they're on break. So I usually typically have mechanics that have specific tasks for the day for one thing. And then I have like kind of a labor pool mechanic that takes care of their breaks that breaks them. So, um, so you want to make sure that they're doing that. And then I could say I could schedule the other one to service the other one. But as you can see, I don't really need these at the moment until I use up all the power here. So just remember that um, you can use your park entrances as your power source and they don't need servicing. So if you really want to keep it simple, if you kind of want to cheat it, you can place <laughs> more of these uh, if you want. So say like I can do this. Now I'm going to that gives these distributors even more power to work off of. So if I click on it now, now it has 480 because I have another entrance. So if you really want to, you could like hide some entrances and utilize those. But again, if um, if you want even more power than that, again, connect all of these together. Kind of like so. And that will supply even more power, should supply more power to this distributor. Now we're at 720 and I haven't even utilized these. So um, it's up to you how you want to play. If you want to do like specific management and actually have to manage these things, definitely use the intended pieces here with like the power generators and the solar panels. If you want to cheat it a little bit, uh, you can utilize um, park entrances because they don't need servicing and you could actually hide this like you, or you can make a really big entrance uh, if you want to have like more turnstiles, you know, um, because <clears throat> again, I didn't know right away either that these actually supply power and they don't need servicing. So it's an easy power source to use, not to mention that. Um, let me see. How much do ride entrances cost? Ride entrances aren't that expensive as far as I know. So if you go to entrances, they only cost, I guess, oh, they cost zero dollars, apparently. So, <laughs> they don't even cost money to build. And you can basically get a ton of uh, power from these. So, now will Frontier change this? Uh, in the end, maybe, uh, because it is kind of a cheap way to get your power going. And now that I attach those, look at that, I got 960 power now, just from these entrances alone. Now, if I wanted to, we could attach these two and get even more power, but that's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, just remember, whatever you attach it to, like this will add on. So if I attach these, it will supply even more power to these and now we'll probably have like a ton of power in this yeah 1460 so <clears throat> it just kind of based on how you want to play and again these distributors just distribute power you don't have to have maintenance doesn't have to be able to access these you can put these anywhere you want and just kind of hide them wherever so again it's just up to you if you want to have the challenge of and playing a little bit more with management use these ones um, if you don't want to and you just want to have free power not really free power but like no servicing power where you don't have to service anything use the front entrances and you can kind of hide these in a building or something if you want to <clears throat> so that's the easy way to do it um the uh, same cannot be said for water uh so we ha do have to do if you're doing water parks and stuff you'll want to utilize your water as well might as well go over these. They work very similar. You have to filter your water to keep your water clean. So the water filters are the same as the distributors. And then you can use, say, like these. Um, you can use a water tower or a water pump. Um, or a wa underground well as well. These can also be used. So, And that will utilize uh, your filters will 
give your, uh, you can see water available, um, and that will help with your, um, your water parks and your water slides and pools all need to have those. So that's going to about be do it. If you have any questions in the comments section, guys, let me know, but power and water is actually pretty simple to use if you know how to use it. Um, but I've had some requests on how to use them. So, um, that's basically how you use it. Um, if you're just wanting to do a sandbox park with no management, again, be sure to click the creative option. That way you don't have to worry about, uh, any of this. Um, but, um, if you're doing a sandbox park, um, uh, remember you can do that. So you don't have to worry about manage, uh, electric management if you don't want to. Um, but anyways, that's going to do it for this guys. I hope you guys found it useful. Um, especially on how how you can use your entrances as a power source. So, but thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you have questions in the comment, let me know. And I will try and get to you if I can. So, make sure you guys have a great day and a cooler tomorrow, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, and goodbye.